So we've got we've got to make a shift. We've got to shift out of second Reformation Christianity, which was all about restoration, restoring all the things that had been lost, into third Reformation Christianity. And here's one of the shifts that I believe that we are going to make, is that we're going to, well, not stop using the word church, because it's, it's a good term, but we're going to change our mentality from church to ecclesia. Why? Because Jesus said, I'm giving my ecclesia, the, kings, the keys of the kingdom. It's a governmental term. You know what? Church just has a different connotation. And it's good. We're a family, right? We're a family before we're an army. So we're still the church. But we've got to start allowing God to shift our mentality to understand Matthew 16, because see, in the, in the old Second Reformation, in the understanding of church, it was all about personal salvation, personal discipleship, personal breakthrough, sometimes having a form but not having any power. But when we start thinking like an ecclesia, we understand that it's not just about personal transformation, but transforming cities and nations. It's not just about personal discipleship. It's about discipling nations. You understand Jesus didn't say go make disciples. He said go disciple nations. A third reformation mentality. It's not just about having your needs met. God wants to meet your needs. But he's, it's also about having a greater kingdom cause. To see harvest, to see salvation, to see an awakening, to see, uh, to see massive revival, global revival. I want to remind you what Charles Finney said in the Second Great Awakening. He said, a revival changes the heart of a man, but an awakening changes the heart of a nation. We don't just need a revival. We need an awakening. Amen? And we've got to think differently about that. We can't just think, we can't be a church that has a form but no power. But I believe in the Third Reformation that signs, wonders, miracles are not just going to be done from the pulpit or in the front section of a church, but they're going to be done in your workplace and they're going to be done in Walmart and they're going to be done in your families and in your neighborhoods. Every saint is going to begin to believe that they've got a key. Do you have a key? See, I don't just have a key. Bishop doesn't just have a key. Apostle does. You've got a key. He likes his key. A small key can open up great doors. But we've got to make a shift. I will build my ecclesia, and the gates of hell will not prevail against you. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. You're going to become the keeper of the keys. That's a lot of responsibility. But the church gets so caught in just me, 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 my, my, my. Bless me, bless me, bless me. That's good. I, I want to be blessed. I want God to bless you. But understand, there's a bigger picture. It's not the gospel of salvation only. It's the gospel of the kingdom. We've got to make that shift if we're going to know how to really use these keys. We've got to understand the level of authority God is entrusting into us as the keeper of the keys that gives us access to everything that we need. Amen? So what are the keys? Let's just quickly go over that. Number one, the gold key. I just really felt like it was a, a key of favor. And we'll probably preach on favor. So I didn't even give you any scriptures on it because I've got about 200 scriptures on favor. And I couldn't choose one, okay? <laughs> it's being placed on our shoulder. Come on, put the key of favor on your shoulder. It's going to open up opportunities for influence and advancement for the kingdom and for individuals. But to whom much is given, much is required. The key of favor is going to unlock your voice in a new way. And it's going to activate a double portion of the anointing. I believe that God is causing us to understand the key of favor is it shifts things. Back in Exodus chapter 3, I'll just tell you this, is that when they were um, under cruel Egyptian bondage for 430 years, it says 
in Exodus chapter 3, it says God gave his people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And out of that favor, the Pharaoh let them go. Let me say this. When favor shows up, everything changes. Let me say that again. When favor shows up, everything changes. Favor is the root word of the word favorite. So, because I have the microphone, I can tell y'all I'm God's favorite. I'm sorry for the rest of you, okay, but I'm God's favorite. On Friday night, we did a, an activation, and our, our little grandson, Elias, was teamed up with uh, Ann Black. And, and Elias told her, Miss Ann, you are God's favorite. And you are the most powerful woman in the entire universe. When we get an attitude like I'm God's favorite, things happen for us. It's not pride. It's just an owning of what God has done for us. And we'll preach on favor a little bit more in another time. But I, I want you just to say, I've got my key of favor. It's, it's really, it's a master key that opens up everything else. The silver key. And I want to spend a little time talking about this. In the scripture, the symbol of silver is tied to purity. Psalms 12, 6 declares the words of the Lord are pure words as silver tried in the furnace of the earth purified seven times. Have you felt like the heat's been being turned up on you? <laughs> Listen, God's been putting us all through the trying fire. I think the prophet's words have gone through a trying over this last year. I think that our faith has been tried in the last year, year and a half. Come on, how many feel like your faith's been tried? Okay, but listen to this in Psalm 66.10. It says, oh, Lord, we pass through your fire like precious metals made pure. You've proved us, perfected us, and made us holy. And you know the, the analogy, of course, when they are trying silver, they keep turning it up, skimming off the impurities, turning it up, skimming off the impurities, turning it up seven times hotter until... The, 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 the silversmith or the master can look down into that silver and see his reflection. What do you think God's doing with us? He wants to see his reflection in us. 